The felon sneaks a peg out of his palm and inserts it into the eye of the lock. Soon, he was able to open the handcuffs with ease. The airliner that was transporting the prisoners then took off. The prisoner John pulled a thin wire from his mouth and pulled out a greasy paper bag inside which turned out to be a match and a small bottle of gasoline. George nodded his head. Then, John then poured the gasoline to the prisoner beside him and lit the match and threw it at him. The flames instantly burst. The guards hurriedly grabbed a fire extinguisher to put out the fire. John took the key to open the cell door. The felon rushed out of the cell and hooked his handcuffs around the guard's neck. The other guards reacted and immediately grabbed electric rods and rushed into the cabin and quickly electrocuted the felon to the ground. The female guard also quickly fought back to subdue John, but it was too late. John pulled down the gate at the last minute. George rushed out of the cage and knocked down a guard. Immediately afterwards, he rushed to the cockpit and got a pistol and threatened the captain with a gun not to report the situation on the plane. He then returned to the cabin and smashed the blaring alarm. With only a handgun, he took control of the situation inside the plane and declared himself the captain. This is your captain speaking. I have the only gun on board. Welcome to Con Air. At this point, the inmates were cheering excitedly. Only Cage was constantly shaking his head. He is a soldier. Eight years ago, he was convicted of accidentally killing a gangster. Today, it happens to be the last day of his sentence. He was about to take a flight home when this incident unexpectedly occurred. Inside the cabin, the inmates began to pack up the body. The policewomen were handcuffed against the prisoners, but the handcuffs were opened. However, just as John uncuffed a prisoner's ankle, when the hidden air marshal put out the pistol hidden in the ankle and hijacked John, George hid behind the policewoman and confronted him and tried to dissuade him. One man and one gun were obviously not enough to solve the inmates in the cabin. The prisoner behind the air marshal prepares to sneak up on him from behind. Suddenly, George hits the air marshal. Cage was very reluctant but could not do anything about it. Next, the plane lands at the airport and hands over six prisoners. Cage among them, but for the sake of his friends he decides to stay. This is a felon handover scene. The Washington T team at the airport took it very seriously. The plane comes to a slow stop and George leads the men, disguised as police officers. Inside the cabin, six prisoners with black plastic bags on their heads walked off the plane. Then, the drug lord who planned the whole attack and a felon who killed 37 people, known as the Joe State Butcher, were also put on the plane. John then smuggled the plane's tracker into a geriatric tour plane. Kate's tape, which had been secretly hidden on a prisoner, fell to the ground, which immediately attracted the attention of prison guards. George shoots down the guards before they have a chance to evacuate. He then instructed Tom, who had replaced the captain, to take off. Cage had to use his prisoner status again to get close to George. Cage learns that they will change planes at the airport. The FBI immediately dispatched three helicopter gunships to follow the tracker and go after them. He can hurriedly contacted the leader, according to the message of the body dropped by Cage, to tell them to turn around and rush to Lingna Airport, but the leader insisted on following the signal to pursue. He can have no choice but to drive his car alone to Lingna Airport and notify the state police force to leave at the same time. The leader followed the signal for more than 300 kilometers, but found that it was a tourist plane. He had to turn around and fly to Lina Airport. Ken had just arrived at Lina Airport when he found that the tower staff had been killed. Immediately after, the plane also entered the airport, but when the plane was ready to land, they almost collided with a civilian helicopter. Tom hurriedly pulled up and finally landed in a sand pit when he was about to hit a fuel drum. But the drug lord's pre-arranged plane has not arrived yet, which makes George angry. Cage's friend William is getting weaker and weaker due to lack of insulin. He decides to help William find a syringe first. George arranged for everyone to drag the plane out of the pit first and Cage volunteered to go to the oil dispenser when he actually took the opportunity to look for the syringe. When he arrived at the wooden shed, he was raided by three men. When he saw the plane here, he realized that the drug lord did not want to take George and the others with him to escape. Cage took the opportunity to install a silencer and then launched a counterattack, and with the help of Beacon, he quickly overpowered the enemy. Cage had a chance to escape alone, but he couldn't abandon his friends. He turned around and continued his search for the syringe. However, unbeknownst to them, there was still a man hidden in the Pika plane. At that moment, the prisoner of the tower lookout, Peek spotted the state police force that was coming in the distance. George hurriedly instructed his subordinates to speed up and tow the plane out. 
The drug lord then ran into the wooden shack to get on the pickup plane and prepare to take off and escape. You can run outside a few crane landing gear to stop the plane from taking off. The plane instantly lost control and crashed into a gas station. George realized that he was betrayed by the drug lord. Instantly, the drug lord was dead. He was the most dangerous prisoner in America. He led a group of prisoners who hijacked the plane and refueled and changed planes at Lena Airport. At this point, a large number of state guardsmen immediately arrived. George rushed to distribute weapons and quickly developed a confrontation plan. They gathered gas canisters on both sides of the road. The prisoners waited for the convoy to enter the ambush. Then they quickly blew up the gas canisters and destroyed the police cars. They then attacked the police officers in the encirclement. The officers were caught off guard and suffered heavy casualties. Ken drove a bull down Sear to cover the officers' counterattack. Cage also finally recovered the syringe from a rescued fire truck. He returns to the plane and rescues William. To delay the prisoner's escape, Cage tied the plane's braces to a post. George waited for the prisoners to fight for some time and then had to withdraw to the plane in a panic. When the plane took off, he realized that the tether was tied to the stone pillar. He decisively shot the pillar and broke it. The rope was also thrown into the house and hooked the sports car. The sports car flew straight up into the sky along with the plane. The roadster then crashed into the tower and broke apart. After the escape, the prisoners were singing and dancing, but George felt something was wrong. He suspected that there was an undercover police officers on the plane. He then threatened the undercover officers with the life of the policewoman. As Kate prepares to get up, William preempts him and admits that he's the undercover officers. George kills him, just as George was about to shoot Cage. Helicopter gunships came after him and fired wildly at the plane and prepared to shoot it down with missiles. Cage takes the opportunity to fight back. He went to the cockpit and forced the pilot to land the plane. He then uses his pager to tell the helicopter gunships outside that he is in control of the aircraft. He can rushes to inform his superiors that Cage is innocent. Only then did his superiors finally order the destruction of the plane to be cancelled. But the plane's engines failed on one side and it ran out of fuel. So it stumbled and landed on a Las Vegas street. After the plane came to a halt, several prisoners were brought under control. William was also taken to an ambulance for treatment. Back George, the felon, and Tom free from the bottom of the plane, quietly climb out and steal a fire truck to escape. Cage and can find out and chase him on a motorcycle. Cage jumps on the fire truck and struggles with George. The motorcycle crashes into the back of the fire truck causing an explosion. The felon dies. He can climbs on the fire truck and splits the hydrant, rushing towards Tom with a water gun. Tom is thrown out of the car as the fire truck crashes into it. Cage leaned George on the ladder after raising the ladder while the out of control fire truck hit the overpass when George was thrown straight off and landed on the conveyor belt and was crushed to death. Subsequently, Cage finally met his wife and daughter. The family embraced happily.